Hello everyone. Welcome to the session. Uh, we are looking forward to speak to you. Uh, Sachin Goel, I'm the group time partner for Capgemini Financial Services. Capgemini <laughs> is a multinational organization supporting pretty much all industry verticals. Uh, specifically, we focus on financial services, uh, working with all major logos uh, across, across the sector. Uh, we are going to discuss about trading journeys that we have accomplished using AWS for the uh, for LPL Financial. Uh, I have Abhishek with me who will be presenting you the details about it as to how uh, they have achieved the, the AWS adoption in a complex trading environment. As you would know, financial services is not an easy sector when it comes to the regulation as well as very low tolerance around the risk vigilance out there. Uh, moving on to cloud could become an easily tense moment for for uh, 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 for this vertical, right? Specifically in the trading setup, we are very proud to be able to work with LPL Financial uh, to achieve the business outcomes and making a technology shift out there. Um, I'll welcome Abhishek to come on board and start presenting the details and take us through the journey out there. Hey, everybody. Um so uh, thank you, Sachin, for introduction, and appreciate the partnership. Uh, so high-level overview about myself. My, I'm Abhi Sharma. I work for LPL Financial, where I oversee the trading and investment management platforms. Uh, so a bit about LPL. Um, so LPL is the number one broker dealer uh, in, in the United States. We manage more than a one and a half trillion assets uh, across 26,000, 28,000 financial advisors. Uh, we are Fortune 500 company, and our customers are financial advisors. So we serve 28,000 financial advisors who in turn support 8 million US citizens and US investors. Uh, our goal, our mission as an organization is to support our advisors and institutions for their success. So one of the biggest things for us when we do a tech transformation, it's never done for, because it's done for tech for tech's sake. The driver, the primary driver for our transformations is always around advisor in the center of everything. And every decision we take is to make sure that we can deliver the right value for the advisors to support their scale and growth for their business. Uh, so why, so high level overview about our trading systems, it's a high throughput system. We trade over more than, a, we see more than 1 billion events on the platform, multiple applications, high throughput system, lots of ingress and egress system, uh, messages going in and out of the system. Uh, so why did we have to go to cloud? What, what was the business rationale? Like I said, everything for us is driven by business rationale. It's never check the box, hey, because we did, some, did something, it's cool tech. Uh, so our systems have grown more than 25%, 25-30% percent last three years, and they're growing. So we are growing organically, inorganically. Our systems, are, our advisor demands are increasing. They're expected to do more while making sure that we see 4.9, 5.9's availability, making sure the system never goes down. Fast, millisecond, sub-millisecond response times. So with that, for us, the best way approach was to adopt AWS, right? Now, big overview about our technology, we actually have our own data centers, right? So being in financial services is very important for us to make sure that wherever we have it's safe, secure, scalable, and stable. So our cloud journey, so I don't expect anybody to squint and read through this. The idea of this was when we began this concept of cloud transformation, we knew it is going to be a journey. We could have gone three years behind and another two years and forward if there was real estate on the slide. But the idea is this, if there are large organizations, enterprises, it's, it's very important to know that we are signing up for a multi-year journey. And especially for us, our systems have been built over multiple decades. And we had to make sure that we set that precedence and set that expectation that we're going to deliver this value year over year incrementally. Right? So one of the biggest things we did, for, because we have our own data center, uh, we establish our dedicated up link between AWS landing zone and our own data center. Definitely secure, secure network, one of the biggest primary criteria for us. Right? As we started delivering, again, the, this, the customer centricity was the key for this. We started 
finding out use cases that we could start leveraging AWS and cloud. So we, use, we started doing small wins. If you have a large application for us, we have many multiple applications residing on-prem. Incrementally, we started adding more concepts like microservices, domain-driven divine, serverless architecture. And fast forward last two years, we actually have some of our systems which scale more than 50%, 50x from what they were. Um, we are running, our, our fault tolerance is super high at this time. And, and this journey is continuing, right? So at this time where we are, we our systems have many APIs running in, in, um, in a cloud, but we have transitioned our data as well, which obviously data is one of the biggest thing to transition to cloud. Uh, so as we start looking into this, right? So I just want to bring a couple of use cases for us. Uh, so two use cases you see over here is our intradisk pipeline, our client works rebalancer, which is our flagship uh, trading system. So I'll start with our client works rebalancer system. So this, the, we started building this system almost three years ago. It's a system where we are available to more than 20,000 advisors, 100 million plus trades, transactions going in and out of the platform. Now, the most important business criteria for the system was it cannot reside alone right? because it's part of one of our major ecosystem for our advisor workstation. So we started thinking in terms of what's the best way to adopt modern technology, making sure we can deliver business value and the non-functions as well. So the criteria that should coexist, seamless integration within the existing platform was the big, big, uh, one of the big guiding principles for our decisions on that. Um, so we started small here. The first thing we started doing was we wrote all our business applications, all our logic in cloud, right? All the user experience started going to cloud, seamlessly integrating between our, our API gateway on-prem to API gateway on AWS side, right? And currently, we actually launched this platform this year. And this, year, and, and this platform is highly scalable in the sense that the, when you design a trading system, you design trading system for uh, market events. Right? There could be days where the trading would go multiple x, and your system should be able to self-heal and self-scale as needed. So whatever is one of the biggest criteria for us to designing this platform. Now, adjacent to this, um, we also started building uh, uh, our intraday pipeline. So this is one of my, uh, my favorite use cases. Now, all of us have seen trades personally as investors. And when you make a trade, you want to see impact right away. That if I made a trade, what the execution price did I get? Did it go through? Was it stuck? Was it filled or not? Right? Now, imagine this doing for hundreds of thousands of trades going in parallel, having the throughput. So we had this, our messaging engine going ingress and egress to the market on-prem. And it's, it's not one of those things that you rip apart your current system and you play this overnight with something else. It's not a big bang approach. You have to do this incrementally with backward compatibility. So one of the biggest things we did, referring back to our, uh, the dedicated link we have between our on-prem and cloud engine, we actually started creating federated Kafka. Uh, we use Confluent Kafka for our messaging, even driven architecture. What it gave us, gave us the opportunity was we started optimizing, we started up upgrading our platforms incrementally, and we started moving our messages incrementally to the cloud. Right? This system actually right now can trade hundreds of thousands of transactions per minute. It's funny, we can scale it as much as we can. We actually are scaling it, dialing it down, because the, the systems outside of our company that we work with, they cannot scale to the same level as we can scale. So we really have to dial it down, because we have to make sure that the throughput is consistent throughout the entire life cycle when you make a trade. So this is one of the uh, most impactful uh, 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 use cases that we were able to do. And, one of the, and again, the, one of the biggest things that we learned along this was that there is uh, you can't do big bang approach. You always have to think incrementally, especially in a large scale organizations. Incremental value is one of the key things that you start doing. So this use case was pretty key. Now, for some of the key things we identify, security is number one priority for us, right? So we take two pride in being in financial services. Whatever we do, security, stability, number one priority for us, right? Um, 
that the mean time to detect, mean time to recover, those, those parameters because, you know, things happen. But our systems were so fault tolerant that we can recover in real time based on if some events are happening in the system itself. So uh, those, those are very key um, use cases for us. Now, one of, again, one of the biggest things, right, as a, as a financial company, um, we, we realize there, there is a syndrome that when you start using technology for tech's sake, it catches on to you, right? You've got to bring your business stakeholders, your customers along the journey. Customer centricity is key. Bring your stakeholders along the journey that the rationale of why. Now, what have we, we talked so far was about the why, the what, the platform, and this, which is to me, for us, is one of the hardest part. Identifying the business cases, which make sure that you can deliver value for the customers is one of the biggest things that you can do. And this part, although it's hard, it's relatively easier because this is really the how part, how we get there. So going a going little bit into the weeds about this, right? So we really leverage AWS ecosystem for us to get where we are today. And still, like I said, it's a journey. So we, we started, for example, for our applications, we heavily rely on our e, uh, EC2 instance for single page applications. We have uh, EKS with Far Fargate with horizontal scalability, auto horizontal scalability as needed. Um, uh, we are using uh, 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 the on-prem to cloud handshake happens between the API gateways, which seamlessly integrates with each other, right? Polyglot persistence, because we are in a world where everybody has relational databases migrating from SQL servers, right? So we use Aurora DB heavily, Redshift, grid gain, caching engines, right? Because every DynamoDB, for example, for uh, uh, NoSQL or DocumentDB use cases. Uh, for us, it was more about having the right tools in the right place to deliver the business value, right? Uh, one of the biggest things for us is instrumentation, right? So visibility into the platform is one of the key things that we need. So we obviously have CloudWatch, AWS X-Ray. But in our world where there is two data centers on-prem and then you got your landing zones in the cloud, when you have an application where the data can move through the different life cycles, you've got to have seamless observability across that. So we use Dynatrace for that, right? So it is, it's very cool where, where we can get in and we can have full traceability of the chain of events and how one thing impacted the other because that's, you can get the great tools in the cloud, you can get great tools on-prem, but finding a tool that talks to each other when you're trying to troubleshoot something is something that we learned the hard way and we have a good tools in place right now. Uh, so, so one of the, these are some of the things that we learned, right? I'm not going to go through each one of them here, but a few highlights that we learned, we got, we have a high throughput, we are able to increase 30 times, we have high trade volumes going in, but but I, th I think, right, from enterprise perspective, um, there are f I, I categorize this as four major things that we, can, we, have, we have learned. First thing is talent, right? When you're doing a major transformation like this, you really have to have built a team, a right talent behind it, which includes a culture of continuous learning, right? So you have a talent, you have a team who knows the business, who knows your platforms very well, but you've got to invest in them so that they can go and start learning the new tools and practices, right? So we really believe in the fact that upskilling the talent, building a culture of continuous learning, uh, seek help where you can is key. Ha hiring right people in different areas is key. In fact, we actually did workshops for our business stakeholders for them to understand that is cloud really a giving a term or is it really giving us some value? And obviously it gives a value, right? But when they start looking at it, they realize and they become champions of it. So talent is one of the biggest thing that we learn has to be done. Number two, which you heard me say multiple times, right? Everything that we have done, we, which we believe is for the right thing for our customers, for our financial advisors. And I think for, and that customer centricity should apply to every industry. If, if you are doing that cool tech, tech for tech's sake, it's not really going to be well received in long run. So start with that why, start with starting with the business value. We actually wrote, we are very heavily measurable, metric-driven organization. So for us, we, every OKR is aligned to custom, some outcome for the customer 
or efficiency in the business. That leads to an KPI, which may lead to a business case to incorporate in cloud, right? So it's, was, it's not backwards, but let's do cloud to accommodate this, it was other way around. Let's achieve this business outcome. For that, these tools in the cloud is gonna help us. Uh, so that's number two. Number three, it's we, and again, the use case I, did, I, I shared, all of them were done incrementally. None of them were big bang. Incrementally delivering value. We have milestones to the month, to the quarter month, right? And each milestone is around incrementally upgrading the architecture, transforming the system, and delivering value. Because it's, it's very important to do that, because otherwise, if it's waiting for, it's very hard to learn from your mistakes. Early wins are very key, and incremental wins are even, even important. Um, the last thing I'll say is this, right? Um, it's a journey. For us, it's a multi-year journey, still counting. There's always room to get better, always room to get, uh, do more things. When, when you're doing a transformation which is very tech-focused, right, it's important to make sure that there is a trust established with all your stakeholders. And the trust comes from transparency and communication. Even if it sounds like tech jargon in some cases, people understand that. So for us, one of the biggest lessons was that, for our success was, we actually made sure that our, we were always transparent because there are always things that may not go as expected, but when you establish the line of communication, it really helps to recover from it and keep on delivering with the minor setback. Well, we are almost at time. I really appreciate everybody coming here and spending some time on the session. Thank you so much. And yeah. thank you, Abhishek. Just some uh, closing notes. Uh, it has been a tremendous journey. Uh, there has been a personal learning for myself and a lot of our team members as well that how a relentless business focus can achieve the true outcomes for the technology uh, mitigations that needs to be done. Uh, very unique case study. We conducted a World Wealth uh, World Cloud Report recently, whereby we interview hundreds of executives across the continents, and there is a unanimous voice out there that we have heard. It has to be business-driven outcomes. All the technology shift cannot happen purely for the sake of technology. Have a relentless focus on who your customers are, what their priorities are, keep the customers engaged, keep the business priorities in focus, and then drive the technology outcomes out of that. Right. Great work, Abhishek, for keeping us Thank you, everybody. Yeah. online, yeah. everybody, and thank you so much for showing up today. Thank you all.